We've talked a little bit about spatial joins, how they work and what they do. We use this as, as an example where we took power plants and attached them to states. So if your point was inside of the polygon of a state, you now have two new columns, name of the state and population of the state. But what happens if we switch these two? So if instead of having first plants and then states, what if we do states and plants? States with plants. States with plants. So the one thing that we're going to know already without even running this code is that the new version has the geometry from the states. Instead of each row having the point of a power plant, it has the polygon of the state. So if we look at plants head, if we look at states head, we see that power plants have points, states have polygons. When we did our spatial join first, we said join our plants with our states and we put plants first. So what comes out of this is the point for every single power plant. It keeps the geometry of the very first parameter. So down here, if we do join states to power plants, we know it's going to keep the data, the geographic data, the geometry column from the states. Not so crazy so far. Now the question I want you to ask yourself is, how many rows does this new join have? So the old one that we did, where we took every single power plant and attached it to a state, plants, with states dot shape. It has 7,410 rows. If I join states to plants, if I do the reverse, how many do you think it has? So if this one has, this join right here, gives you a power plant for every state, you might assume Maybe this one, since this one has, you know, there are about 7,500, 7,600 power plants. We only have 50 states, so it'll probably be 50 states. So we'll run this, do a join. Didn't get anything. Oh, here's the problem that I did here. Even though I switched these two parameters, what we need to do is change our operation. The opposite of within is contains. So we're looking for states contain plants, whereas up here, plants are within states. So let's try it again. Run it one more time, and there we go. It seems to have worked. If I take this geodata frame and do a dot shape on it, 50 states, 50 shapes? No. We have the same number of rows and columns as our previous spatial join. Even though we switched the order of these, we ended up having the exact same number of rows. So if you look hard, if we do a head that's a little bit bigger here, you can probably see this more easily. The only thing that's different between these two besides the geometry, is the order of the columns. So right here, megawatts plant source. Over here, megawatts plant source. Over here, name population. Over here, name population. So what happened was it took everything, every column from the states, put it right here, and then it took all the columns from the matching plants and put them over here. For this one, it started off with all the columns from the plants, and then it added on the columns from the matching states. So we were not asking, give me every state 
and tell me how many plants are inside of it. What we ended up doing here was we said, give me every state and then match it with every single plant that is inside of that state. These two do the exact same thing. The only difference is the order of the columns and then the geometry that comes out of it. What we end up getting out of the second one is a row for every single power plant that's inside of a state. Same as we did up here, but the geometry is different. So if you're a power plant that is in Alabama, for example, the Bankland Dam, in the original join where we had the power plants first, it gives you the point geometry of that power plant. But in this join, because we put shapes first, it's going to give you the shape of that state. Every single one of the power plants that's in Alabama comes with the shape of Alabama. So are you a power plant in Nebraska? Your geometry is the shape of Nebraska. Are you a power plant in California? Your geometry is the shape of California. If there are 500 different power plants in California, we are going to have 500 different shapes that are all California. They're all exactly the same, they're just in different rows. So, in terms of data, these two joins are exactly the same. It's mostly because we're doing inner, so we're not keeping any power plants that don't have states or any states without power plants, but as long as you're doing an inner join, the order that you do plants and states or states and plants, it will not matter. The only difference between these two is the order of the columns and additionally, what geometry comes along with it. So you might think that this way of joining was the way to get the count of the number of power plants in the state and that's not true. You can end up doing it with either of these. And if you watch the video on choroplets, you'll learn a little bit more about that. So a lot of times when you're using geopandas, you come across different ways of doing things. And it's not even necessarily that there's a right or wrong. It's just kind of, if it works, it works. Sometimes one method might be slower than another, but in this case, no problem. Different methods, but more or less the same result.